Okay, in this video I want to begin talking about the resting membrane potential and the electrical properties of the cell. Um, these are extremely important when you start discussing action potentials and the way in which neurons communicate and the way in which uh, signals are sent back and forth. Okay, so let's, let's start looking at some uh, background information here on membrane potential and electrical properties of the cell. So electrical signals are used by nerves and muscles to communicate. All cells have a negative charge. That is, the interior of the cell, the cytosol, is negatively charged with respect to the external environment. Okay, so that's important right there. All cells have a negative charge. The difference in charge between the inside of the cell, of a cell, and its environment is the membrane potential. Okay, so that's the membrane potential. So there's a difference in charge between the inside, the cytosol, and the external environment. And that difference in the in charge is what creates what's known as a membrane potential. The difference in electrical potential between the inside of a cell and the environment is maintained by various types of ion channels or pumps. So, for example, I have the sodium, pota uh, sodium potassium pump here, which um, pumps three Na plus ions out of the cell and two K plus ions into the cell. And it does that by using ATP and uh, conformational changes in that in that enzyme, that, that membrane-bound protein. Okay. So although all cells have a membrane potential, neurons have a, the unique ability to actively change their membrane potential. So that's the big difference right there. Um, they have the ability to actively change, okay, the membrane potential. And that change in membrane potential is what eventually will create things like an action potential. So if you can understand membrane potential and resting membrane potential first, then it really sets a good ground, a good base for discussing the uh, more complicated aspects of the of cell signaling here, or signaling between neurons rather. So the membrane potential is established due to a difference in concentration of ions in the cytosol of the cell and the external environment. Okay, so there's going to be a difference in the concentration of ions. In the, within the um, cytosol of the cell and with the in, and with and outside of the cell in the external environment. Okay, so K plus ions are more concentrated inside the cell, and Na plus ions are more concentrated outside the cell. So as we know, and and that, and that might be kind of intuitive there anyway. Okay, so as we know, the plasma membrane is selectively permeable. That is, there is a limit on what types of molecules can pass into and out of the cell. The most common factors for determining what can cross the membrane is charge and polarity. Okay, so how charged is something? How much positive or negative charge does it have? And, and, and is it polar or nonpolar? Okay, and, and also size could play a role, but more more so, it's, it's charge and polarity. The resting membrane potential is all is known or, or can be abbreviated as VM. Okay, so if you see VM, it's resting membrane potential. So membrane potential is extremely important and it's the basis for action potentials, which is what I'm kind of leading up to here. And it says, how can we create a difference in membrane potential? So this I kind of want to just go through the classic sort of explanation that most people give for something like this. And um, basically the way that goes is I have some beaker, right? So I have some beaker here and it has solution in it, okay? And I have a membrane, and I have, say, NaCl, okay? So I have Na plus, Na plus, and Cl minus, okay? Inside this, inside this beaker, right? Now, what happens if so what happens if the P of Na is equal to permeability of Cl minus, okay? And if both of those are equal to zero, okay? So if both of those are equal to zero, then that means the membrane is impermeable to ions, okay? So this means the membrane is impermeable impermeable to ions 
So ions cannot cross at all. So if ions can't cross, then there's not going to be any resting membrane potential. So then the VM must be equal to zero, okay? Because the ions simply cannot cross from one side to the other. Normally, this is going to want to go from high concentration over here, over this way, to where it's lower concentration, okay? But we can't do that here because we have an impermeable membrane, okay? So there's no movement through an impermeable membrane. Now the second case that is commonly investigated is basically the same sort of setup here. We have some beaker, we have some membrane, and we have NaCl, okay? So we have sodium chloride in here. And in this case now, we have P of Na is equal to Cl minus which is equal to infinity, okay? So what that's saying is that this membrane here is infinitely permeable to both Na plus and Cl minus. So it's permeable to both Na plus and Cl minus infinitely. So it can, essentially, the ions can simply cross freely, okay? So in this case, what will the VM be? Well, the VM, again, is going to equal zero, okay? And why is that? You might say. You say, I don't understand. It's crossing the membrane. There should be some kind of potential change. Well, not 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 really, because what's happening here is that this Na plus and Cl minus is gonna, you know, quickly cross here, but what's gonna wind up happening is we're just gonna have equal amounts. Okay? So the concentration on both sides will quickly will become identical. Okay? So I have identical concentration of NaCl over here, identical concentration of NaCl over here. So there'll be no difference in um, in the in the distribution of the ions. So the difference in concentration of ions. So remember I said before that the membrane potential is established due to a difference in concentration of ions. So in both of these cases, there's no difference in concentration of ions across this membrane. Here, they both the both have equal amounts of concentration on both sides. Over here you have all the concentration on this side and nothing on this side because it's completely impermeable. So there's one final case. And that, and that final case basically has the same thing going on here. So we still have NaCl on one side and we have a, we have a membrane here. And the P for Na is equal to infinity. So it's infinitely permeable to Na, okay? But the P of the permeability to Cl minus is equal to zero, okay? So what's going on here, okay? What's going on here essentially is what's known as a semi-permeable membrane, okay? My permeable membrane, okay? Because it's infinitely permeable to Na+, and it's not permeable at all to Cl-. So what's going to happen there? So what's going to happen with this, with this third kind of unique case um, of a semi-permeable membrane? So the membrane is selectively permeable to some but not all ionic species, okay? Most biological membranes have this property, um, but so do other things. I mean, the, you can make um, you can make um, these membranes. I mean, maybe you've done the experiment in um, introductory biology class where you start to look at how the concentrations, you know, hypertonic, hypotonic, or and seeing how that works. So there are other things here, okay? But biological membranes, in specific, is what we're talking about. So what will happen in the last case is, at first, the Na plus will cross the membrane from the more concentrated left side to the less concentrated side. Because there's a, there's a thermodynamic end, a, a tendency, you know, and that's entropy for the Na plus or any chemical substance to have equal concentrations, okay, in all regions. To which, it, to which it accesses, okay? But this is just basic diffusion. That's, that's really what we're talking about here. We're talking about basic diffusion. Um, things wanna move from 
higher concentration to lower concentration. So it makes perfect sense that if this is infinitely permeable to Na+, plus, then Na+, plus is going to want to travel over to this side. Okay? So what that say so what so we probably are not going to have equal concentrations okay so as more na plus diffuses through the membrane remember the cl minus doesn't the cl minus doesn't move it can't cross the membrane so this will create a charge difference right because we're going to have positive more positive charge over here and more negative charge over here okay so this is going to be positive and this is going to be negative right so we're going to have a charge difference on the two sides of the membrane. And there'll be, you know, obviously this will be negative for, with respect to this side, and this will be positive with respect to that side, okay? Because this is relative. Okay? And how long is that movement going to occur? So how long is it going to, how long are Na plus molecules going, or ions going to cross? Well, until the electrical force that tends to draw them to the right is equal to the concentration, okay? So the tendency impelling them to move to the right. So this is going to occur until, basically, until the electrical force starts pulling them back in, pulling them back to the other side, okay? When this occurs, the movement will be zero, okay, for Na+. And that's exactly how how this semi-permeable membrane works. I mean, and you're going to have a system where there's a char change in um, charge. There's a net charge over time. Okay? So, I just want to go over those three examples. And now if I have time, what I'll do is, I think I have enough time to add, add this in here. We can talk a little bit about what's known as the Nernst equation. So there's an equation that we can use to kind of model what's going on here. So we can model what's going on here and we can actually calculate. We can calculate the changes in membrane potential. We can calculate the resting membrane potential with this equation. And that's really and that's really important because um it gives us kind of that starting point to understand what's going on. So basically what that equation in is is voltage is equal to R T over Z F okay R T over Z F times the log of the concentration outside so the concentration outside over the concentration inside the cell. Okay, so that's it. It's really kind of quite a simple equ equation. And um, just to define the variables here, R is equal to the gas constant. Okay, R is equal to the gas constant. So that's just a constant. That's just something you you plug in. Z is equal to the charge on the ion. So if you're dealing with, so basically what I'm saying with the charge on the ion, if you're dealing with Na, you have plus one charge, right? If you're dealing with Cl, you have a minus one charge. If you're dealing with K, you have a plus one charge. And if you're dealing with Ca, calcium, you're dealing with a plus two charge, okay? So let me get those on camera there. So those are the charges, and those would be your Z values. You would use plus one if you're dealing, if you're looking, investigating how sodium moves, minus one if you're investigating Cl. K, you'd be using plus one and plus two for calcium. Okay, so Z is the charge, R is the gas constant, T is equal to the temperature, okay, and F is Faraday's constant, I believe. Yep. So Faraday's constant. Okay, so all this is basically constants pretty much. Everything here is constants except for the concentration outside and the concentration inside. Okay? And of course, don't forget the charge because that's important. And this can actually be simplified a little bit more, but I'll get more to that in the next video.